All right, Jim, one more question here. This was sent to cornydrivethru at gmail.com from Nick Fox. Not to be confused with Foxy, as talked about earlier. Who do you think are the worst world champions of all time? We all know the recent ones, but just for us wrestling fans, <laughs> in the UK, who is a, this trailed off into another language almost here, but I guess in the territory days as well as now, the worst champions of all time. Well, now, worst world champions. He didn't say worst, worst world territory champion. champions. Well, it said... Um, in the UK, who was a bad idea didn't work out back in the territory days. So that's how it ended, but it oh, trailed well, off in the middle. Well, let's assume that we're talking worst world champion. Uh, Dick Hutton comes to mind in terms of a guy that, well, now I've, I've confused everybody. Well, you, you know, know what, though? Into great detail. What? Well, I was just going to say, you should say what well, qualifies someone to be a, a good champion, realistically, which is they draw. People are interested in seeing them, and they keep buying tickets to see them. And drawing means something different now than it did 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 50 years ago, but it all comes back to that. That's what makes a good champion, right? Well, yeah, and uh, Dick Hutton was an NCAA wrestling champion. And Fez, when it was time for Fez to drop the belt and he wanted to go do an international tour, he wasn't going to drop it to Rogers because he didn't like Rogers. He would never put him over. And he wanted to put the NWA world title on a legitimate wrestler that would carry on in his footsteps. But the problem was, and I don't think Thez even realized, even though he was a legitimate wrestler, he'd been a pro at that time for over 20 years. And he knew how to use his legitimacy in the confines of professional wrestling. And he kind of stood above it and et cetera. But he knew how to promote matches. He knew how to do newspaper interviews. He, you know, that type of thing. Dick Hutton apparently was just a big, you know, he was a great wrestler as an amateur, but when he turned pro, he was colorless and they tried to make him a cowboy at one point. He looked like Kurt Angle wearing a cowboy hat. The promoters didn't like him. He didn't draw. He was, he had no charisma and the NWA fell apart in large part while he was champion because so many of the other, the NWA member territory said, we're just going to make our own champion so we can sell some fucking tickets. So that backfired and, you know, hurt the, the organization. So it wasn't that he was a rotten wrestler, but he was a rotten pro wrestler. And, but I'm trying to think of a really bad champion back in those days. You didn't have the situation where they'd put the title on a great Kali or whatever. It, you had to be a, a good champion back in those days to get the spot because the promoters gave it to you based on whether you would draw and you had to have some track record of already drawing to begin with. What makes a great champion? is a guy that can not only sell tickets and is over and can talk and work, but can make the other guy look like he's even better because he, sh oh, he should have won next time he's going to win. That was the whole way that the thing was built was people wanted to see a world title change and they wanted to see their hero win it. And they would chase those two things for months or years, the fans would before a few of them were gratified. But you, title changes were rare. You didn't see them all the time. And only the guys that were voted on by multiple promoters, in most cases, got that fucking spot. So there was not a lot of hit and miss. Hey, let's put this on it. Like the regional titles. Boy, there we could go down the records for all of the titles and come up with how the fuck did they think putting a belt on this guy was a good idea? Well, as far as world champions go, obviously the answer is Tommy Rich, but if we're talking about the modern era... Well, no, say, Tommy Tommy Rich had it five days and and still actually drew a lot more money in the wrestling business than Dick Hutton ever did. He had it when he had bangs. Also, if you ever see a photo of like any of the NWA champions gathered together all in their suits, minus Dory Funk Jr., who has his own yeah. weird advertising-based fashion sense. You can't really picture Tommy Rich in the mix with 
Gene Kaniski and Blue Fest. <laughs> you just can't. Uh, but in terms of the era from the 90s on, from when you were involved with the creative end of the business on, 1989, 1990 oh, on. Oh, good Lord. I can't even. I mean, I can do the NWA champions from probably Longson through fucking Flair, but I don't even remember who had the belt in the 90s. Jim pulling a Tony Khan here. I no just, answer. I'm, no, I'm, it's, it's not. A, it, the answer is I don't fucking remember. How about that? I plead the fifth. Third, fourth, and fifth. Third, fourth, and fifth. All right, well. What would you get if you pled the Third Amendment? What is the Third Amendment? I don't know. Hold on. We will find out right now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I plead the Third Amendment. I will refuse to answer any more questions because I'm pleading the Third. No soldier shall, in time of peace, be quarantined in any house without the consent of the owner nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. There you go. Whatever the fuck it is that that means that you just said, I, apparently I can kick a fucking soldier out of my house if I want to. Well, they're not allowed to forcibly house themselves at Castle Cornet. I think house themselves forcibly? Forcibly. That's right. What is that, a All horse? Right. What was that? And that's the cavalry. Are you riding off there? <laughs> I'm riding off into the sunset. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going we to ride go off. watch AEW. No, we don't have to. 